Here is a 2024 BMW Z4 M40i in black sapphire metallic over cognac varnesca leather. This is one of those sweet spot vehicles because anyone it competes against is going to be right at six figures to get zero to 60 or even horsepower compared to it. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and yes, mechanically speaking, it's the same thing as a Toyota Supra in which you'll save about 10 grand or more. In the front gets full LED headlights. The iconic kidney grille is going to be more sleek giving a wide profile and a low stance. So it has that aggressive front fascia with a long hood. And when you go in 40, instead of going S drive 30i, you're swapping that 2.0 twin power turbo into this 3.0 liter BMW M powered turbo inline six cylinder. That's gonna have 382 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque paired to the ZF eight speed automatic transmission. Why is this a sweet spot? Because you're getting a zero to 60 at 3.9 seconds. Now, Let's put this into perspective with Porsche. Go into the Boxster. You're gonna have to go all the way up to the GTS 4.0, which is a hundred grand. And it's still not gonna be as fast as this. Yes, you're gonna have more horsepower, but that's what I mean by the bargain underneath this. Go into the Lotus. It starts at a hundred grand and you'll get a 2.0 liter four cylinder. The supercharged V6 is still gonna be slower than this. Unfortunately, BMW is going to put it on the chop block. So 2026, around March, is when they're gonna stop making these. So if you want this example, I hate to say, you might have to rush a little bit quicker. We got a stagger setup. This is a 255 35 19 in the front with a 275 35 19 out back, gloss black wheels. The M brakes, red calipers, four pistons in the front, single floating caliper in the rear. So this is track worthy. And when I'm saying these numbers, this is faster than Maserati's. This can be faster than Aston Martin's, Bentley's. When you're thinking of the value, yeah, it's gonna to top around 75 to near $80,000, but nothing. The only vehicle that comes to mind that would be a sweet spot besides this, in which it's gonna be a coupe, the Nissan Z. You're gonna get 400 horsepower with that because it's the old Infiniti Q60 Red Sport 400 engine, which they discontinued that. So when you're starting to look at luxury performance vehicles, who do you have left? Now you go into Mercedes, the SL AMG. That vehicle is gonna cost well over $100,000. It's also longer. It's not necessarily in the same class because of what you're getting for a smaller package in a near 50-50 weight distribution. And all of that is still going to achieve 23 MPGs for the city and 31 MPGs for the highway. Normally, I would say, man, I wish they had an M variant, but when you have a curb weight of 3,636 pounds, this is gonna be a fast, lightweight vehicle. LED taillights, the lower gets the dual exhaust outlets, keeping that aggressive stance with the top up or down, giving a classic look to finish off the Z4. Quick release going into 10 cubic feet of storage with a storage nook on the side. And you do get a pass through, which it opens up like a house door. It's kind of cool. We need to go inside, start up this inline M twin power turbo so you can hear that exhaust note. way power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger, heated front seats, manual cushion extensions, memory for both the driver and passenger. Headroom and leg room. It's a wide interior stance. The center takes up a little bit of space. Driver focus setup, gloss black elements are going to surround all of the air vents, satin aluminum, and you get the ambient lighting that's going to run underneath the 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay. Sirius XM AM FM streaming Bluetooth audio. You can change different driving modes and you can configure it to your liking. 
put it into reverse. We have a reverse camera with full trajectory for the front and the rear with backup assist. And you can do the sensors only if you like, but I would probably recommend using this. Going into dual climate control settings, open up the Z4 to a wireless charging pad, the digital key for the Z4, USB 12 volt, you're gonna have the galvanized interior elements and the key fob for the M40i. Gloss black elements. This is gonna be more sporty. It opens up for the cup holders with another USB port and some storage in between. Leather wrap steering wheel, M spec heated multi function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The paddle shifts and the gauge cluster is a 12.3 digital reader that can go through an array of information. When you click onto the BC that is right here on the top of the stock, and when you change the driving modes, it will change out the configuration. Same thing with the heads up display. Harman Kardon sound system comes into play right above, so it kind of integrates it to the dash. It's gonna be more sporty with the contrast stitching and the same thing for your arms, one touch up and down for the windows. I do like the speaker design here, just a smaller storage pocket with a little cubby for the driver. And behind the seats, you will have some storage with a storage net, the pass through, and if you need to put four child seats, they have it on both sides, 382 horsepower. It's insane. Look at this thing. That exhaust is crazy. Look at the dynamics. Oh, it just rips through the corners. If they didn't put tire shine on this thing, I would be going a lot faster. You feel confident, composed. I like the spit that's coming out of that exhaust. Oh, man. Well, let's see the brakes. You can stop on a dime if you need to. Now we're going to see that 3.9. I would say it goes every bit of that plus. BMW does a fabulous job with performance and pairing it with these brakes and that's so lightweight that it just kind of goes. You feel confident on every bend. <laughs> it's lovely. And a symphony that comes out from that exhaust, wow. When you go into an M Sport variant, you're getting this engine for the M440i, in which that shows what I mean by the power that comes underneath the hood, because this vehicle weighs a lot less. <sighs> I'm gonna just put it in comfort before I get pulled over. Man, it's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros is the package that you're getting overall is absolutely one of the best in value class because if you go to Porsche, you're not going to get the same in the sense of performance underneath it because you're going to be spending over $100,000. The same thing with Lotus. The Nissan Z is a sweet spot vehicle, but I prefer the Infiniti Q60, which they discontinued and put everything into the Nissan variant only because you had four seats in that vehicle. If it was a convertible, I would personally own it. I was looking to option one of these in the Dravid gray metallic with the red or Fiona red Vanessa leather. Pricing is still gonna be about 77 to $80,000 for it, in which it puts you at an M4 competition price, base model. Obviously feature it up, put the carbon exterior package and you're around $102,000. So where you're at, it does open up the field to a lot of variants, but if you're looking for that two seat convertible, fun to drive, it takes the box. Taking me into the cons. The way they integrated the 8.8 inch screen, I'm fine with. I think they did a great job, but then in the back, they should have just polished it off like they did in the front, not making it where it's two parts because it looks like it's in the dash 
from the driver or passenger side. The driver focus setup I'm okay with, but I absolutely dislike these cup holders. I purposely brought a, a drink with me just to see how it was and I had to keep my arm up the whole time. So I would say that's the biggest problem that I have with this vehicle is you do not have any storage at all. So for a daily use, it's not gonna be as practical as I would personally like. I used to own a Cadillac XLR, it's a two seat variant. I didn't have the V-Series because it wasn't out at the time when I purchased it. They came out a couple years later. However, I had storage, I had cup holders. The infotainment screen is big enough, the gauge cluster, everything of the design is good, but then these Harman Kardon speakers that's right in front, it looks like it was an afterthought. They forgot to put them and they said, oh, you know what, let's throw it in there. Because this is the same more or less as a Toyota GR Supra, I would like to see maybe a little bit more performance on this side because when I'm in the GR Supra, I like it. It's a little bit more noisy, but you can only get it as a coupe. You have the same suspension layout. You more or less have the same car and you're saving around 10 to 15 grand. So it's hard to say, should you option a convertible when you have such a discounted variant? As for other rivals, Mercedes, all of which is gonna be over $100,000. Audi, they don't even make a two seat that would be comparable to this. The TT RS was the absolute best because that five cylinder, just a phenomenal engine, but they don't make the RS anymore. Now it's just basically a cruising car. This ticks the box for cruising and everyday performance, plus it's track driven. The long hood helps me understand the dimensions of the vehicle because another con, a lot of blind spots. Behind you, it's similar to the new Corvettes where you just have like, I don't know, 10 inches of blind spot on both sides. And because this doesn't have the 360 degree reverse camera, I don't feel as confident reversing this. I felt the same way in the Mercedes AMG SL63, but that's over $200,000. So we're not gonna compare the two, just saying how the feel is. You do sit up higher in this where you sit lower in the Mercedes, which I like the way I sit in that one because it just boasted more of a dominant stance where this one, it's a little abnormal. I would like to sit down a little bit more so because I'm tall. If you're shorter than six foot, I don't think you're gonna have an issue, but even being six foot, you still won't. Moving in and out of lanes is not gonna be a problem. The steering's light. You're gonna hear the exhaust. You will hear some road noise, but it's a lot more cleaned up than the GR Supra. And as for Porsche, I mean, when you're looking at a weekend plus an everyday value, Hands down, this one is going to take it. But if you're looking for the best price, the Nissan Z, but then you're sacrificing in the sense of not getting all the luxury amenities that you get with BMW. Because it has so much power underneath the hood and it's rear wheel drive, I wish it had an X drive paired to it because it is going to be a little bit more wheel happy. And because it's so small, you just feel like it's so much faster than the numbers project because it's so instant where you're kind of riding on the ground even though you're still sitting up high. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 BMW Z4 M40i for our car review.